Good morning, everyone. I'm here to film a quick whirlwind guide to Pearson simulations. So um, let's get started. I'm going to share my screen with you and you'll see my whole desktop because when you open a simulation, it opens in a new window. So you can see I've got Pearson open here. I'm just on a word course and I'm on the student view. So this should be what your course materials looks like as well. I'm going to just go into module three here. Oops, <laughs> that's another video. Uh, module three here to have a look at the simulations. There are two types of simulations. One is the training and one is the exam. Neither contribute to your final mark. They are teaching tools. They are practice. You have unlimited attempts for them. Um, if I've forgotten to update your settings, let me know. You should have unlimited attempts for them. Um, let's have a look. So the first option is the training one, and that's the one with these blue pointy fingers. And the difference is that the training is going to provide training. It's going to provide teaching tools as you progress through the material so that you can um, utilize those tools and learn and practice. It has a little tutorial mode. It's got videos and it also has written instructions, all of which you can check um, so that you can you know, get through the simulation. As you can see, it opened in a new window and it's now loading. It does take a second to load. Maybe I'll have a sip of coffee while it <laughs> while it thinks. <laughs> Okay, so here we go. This is what it looks like. So depending on the size of your window, you might have the instructions at the bottom and you might have them on the side over here. Um, it's the same thing. Don't worry. Down the bottom, you see in this instruction section, you can see that the current instruction is bold and anything that they want us to enter is in blue. So be very cautious um, about the text enters. Um, for example, this period is not blue, so you wouldn't type that in, okay? The simulations are pretty fussy. And so if you have an extra space, if you have a spelling error, it will mark it wrong. Um, so be careful as you're typing in the information. The next upcoming questions are down here and they are not bolded. You can increase the size of this font if you need to. Um, yeah. Over here, you've got accessibility features so you can adapt things um, to work for you. And you also have this on-screen keyboard, which is very useful, especially if you are on either a Mac or just a laptop that doesn't have this section on your keyboard, this num section um, with the home button and page up and down and, and that sort of thing. So you can use this to create key combinations and hotkeys. This just lets you know how you're doing with your connection. You can view the upcoming questions by clicking on view all. Here they all are. Okay, and it lets you know whether you've tried it or not. And you can jump straight to them. So if you've already done it a couple times and you were just stuck on, let's say, step four, you can just go and only do step four. You can also move through the questions like that. Here is where the learning aids are. And you can see there's three versions. You've got written instructions, a little short video, or a practice launch aid. I'm gonna launch the practice aid right now. So what it's gonna do is it's going to look like this. Um, it's talking to me in my headphones. Okay, so you can, it will tell you, it'll read this out for you and it's gonna highlight the section for you. So I'm gonna follow its instruction. I'm gonna click on insert. And then I'm going to go over here and click on footer. And then I'm going to click on edit footer, just the way it says to. Okay. Fish and wildlife service, no period. Um, and that's that. Did I make any mistakes? You asked fish and wildlife. No. Just press enter, I guess. Did I do something wrong? U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. Yeah, it looks right to me. Oh, 
why isn't it like it? Did I spell something wrong? <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Well, I'm going to turn my practice off and uh, do it myself. So I'm going to close the practice. And now I'm going to do the steps that it showed me. So I'm going to open my footer by going to the insert tab and then going over to the header and footer section, clicking on footer and saying edit footer. You can also get into the footer by simply double clicking on that area of the page. So then I'm going to type in u.s. fish and wild, oops, wildlife service. Okay. And now you can see it's automatically a scene that I've done it and moved me to the next question, which has now become bold, or the next instruction, which has now become bold. So now it asks me to use the insert alignment tab. Um, that's in the position section here. Um, again, we're on the header and footer tools now. So when you click on an object or you're editing an object, you'll get one or two extra tabs down here, which you can see. Um, and the header and footer one is just called design. So here on the position section, you can see insert alignment tab. It's this little um, button. If you have your um, window kind of shrunk a little bit, is it going to hide it? Um, in real life, <laughs> if you make the ribbon shrunk, um, it will hide it. There we go. Um, so you can kind of see uh, how it's hidden that design information now. Um, yes, I'm going to make it bigger again so I can see what I'm doing. All right, so insert alignment tab. I'm just going to click on that. And then I'm just going to click on right and say OK. And now we're going to go to document info, which is again still on the header and footer tools. And this has fields that you can insert. So in computer terms, a field is simply like a, a blank space where you would put some sort of description or quality or, or information about your subject, whatever that is. Um, we'll talk more about fields in Excel, but for now, um, we're just going to carry on. So it asks for file name. So I'm just going to click on file name and it's going to automatically insert that for me. And then we're going to close our footer. So now you can see it's gone to the next question. Again, it's moved along um, and has, in fact, um, yeah, it's moved on. So let's continue. Place the insertion point after the period. So remember, your insertion point is that flashing line, right, that uh, precedes whatever you're going to insert or type. Um, and we're going to put it after through eighth graders in the second body paragraph. Okay, so another terminology I want to make clear for the Pearson instructions is when they talk about a paragraph and a body paragraph. So a paragraph um, is any time if I, I don't know if it's going to let me, yeah, it's not required. So it's not going to let me turn on my non-printing characters, but a paragraph is every time you've pressed enter. Okay, so every time you see this little symbol on your non-printing characters, it's a new paragraph following that. Um, a body paragraph is a multi-line paragraph like this one here. Okay. And then these are single line paragraphs or header paragraphs. Okay, this one too. So there's one paragraph, two, three, four, and so on. So the second body paragraph would be this one here. Okay second multi-line paragraph. So we're going to look for the phrase through eighth graders, which is right here. And we're going to put it after the period. Okay. Then we're going to press space and type in the blue text. The series of wild life camps will begin on June 15 period. And the question is over. All right, we're now on question two, as you can see down here. So we're going to move to a slightly different kind of subject. That was all the footer. So now we're going to look at some page layout options. So we're going to go to the layout tab. And then it asks us to change the margins to narrow. So we're going to click on margins and find the narrow option. Then we're going to go into custom margins and change the left and right margins to one inch. So we're on custom now. Here's my left. It's at 0.5. And I'm going to just make it at one instead on both the left and right. Um, when you're in your desktop program on your computer and it asks you to do inches, which it will, um, keep in mind that many of our computers are uh, set to centimeters. I have information on how to change your display units to inches or how to convert. Um, 
and how to have it automatically convert. Typically, if you just type in the inch sign, it'll convert it to centimeters for you, which is really convenient. Um, if you're having difficulties with that, let me know. All right, so we're going to delete a paragraph, beginning with Swan Lake National Road. Well, I mean, it's right there, but it says it's in the body of the document. So I'm assuming it's this one. Um, Okay, sure. So they want us to delete this entire paragraph, I guess. Cool. Um, and now we're going to delete the single line paragraphs near the end. So from explore down to refuge. Just pressing backspace there. Okay, now we're going to the layout tab. We're going to go to landscape orientation. Um, if you think about portrait is the hamburger and landscape is the hot dog. <laughs> Um, so we've made a landscape orientation and then we're going to go to the view tab. We're going to zoom to one page. So here's the zoom section here and you can make a couple decisions. You've got page width, um, showing multiple pages, and this one here takes it to just one page being displayed. Um, and then we're going to change it to portrait orientation. So we're just going to go back to layout again. We're going to switch that orientation back to portrait. Um, and then we're going to go back to view and we're going to put the zoom on 100. Okay. Um, now we're going to go down to the footer area, double click it, select them both and delete them. Cool. <laughs> and now it takes us on to another question. I want to just pause for a second to view all questions so you can see as I go through it lets me know whether I finished it and whether it was correct or not so you can kind of see how you're doing all right we're going to do an inserting of a watermark so that's obviously um on the design I often get <laughs> the text box uh, or the, the word art button you see there with the sideways A and the watermark button, which has sideways A in the other direction. Um, sometimes I get those buttons confused, but this one's watermark. It's on the design tab with your theme settings. So you're just going to scroll down here and then there's some pre-made ones. So you're just going to find that it's called draft one and it's automatically inserted the watermark behind my text. Now I'm going to need to customize my watermark. So we're just going to go into custom watermark. Try clicking that again. Okay, which looks roughly like this. So we have a text watermark. It says draft. We've already got that. So the thing that we want to change is the color. Um, so that would be here. And we're choosing red, which is this one. So we're going to say, okay. All right, nearly done. So now we're going to put the insertion point after the word June in the second line of the second body paragraph. So I guess they've put that body paragraph back in for us after we deleted it in the previous question. So we're going to look for the word June, which is right here. I can see that. Um, and before the following space, and we're going to delete the space. Okay, sure. So now it should say June 15th, uh, like all attached, I guess. Hold on, did that not do what I wanted? Incomplete action. Place the insertion point after June and delete the space following. I don't know why it's not happy. I, I mean, what it might want actually is for me to use the delete button like this. Go. Yeah, that's what I wanted. Okay, so if you don't have a delete button, if you just have a backspace like me, I don't have um, my full keyboard right now. So that would be using the keyboard to do the delete. All right, so now that the insertion point is in between June and 15, we are going to put in a non-breaking space. So this is on the insert tab and symbols are over here with the omega sign. And we're gonna go into more symbols so that we can get into uh, special characters. So remember symbols are just graphics, icons, images, whatever that isn't usually on your keyboard. And special characters are things that might be on your keyboard, but this adds further formatting information to them. So we're gonna find the non-breaking space, which is right here. I'm gonna say insert. 
and then I'm going to close it. And what that does is it means that even if it's at the end of a line, it's going to defy the word wrap feature and keep that together. So something like a date or someone's name, um, you can keep it on the same line. Okay, now we're going to put our insertion point after the word striker um, in the last sentence of the second body paragraph. So we're in the second body paragraph. Here's the last sentence. There's the word striker. Um, and we're going to put in a trademark symbol. So we're just going to go back to symbol. And on a Windows, you do have these kind of previews of common symbols, so we can add it from right here. In the real program, if you're on a Mac, you will just need to open up symbols for this, um, but Windows does give this nice little preview of common ones. All right, last question. So we're going to put our insertion point at the beginning of the document. It's already there and we're going to put in a page break. So you can do this on your keyboard. It's control enter or command enter if you're on a Mac. Um, make sure if you are on a Mac that you're using Windows versions of the hotkeys for the simulation. So make sure you use control, otherwise it's not going to understand. Um, so we're going to put in a page break. I'm going to show you how to do that from the ribbon though. So we're, there's a couple options. You can go to insert and then there's page break right there, or you can go to layout and go into breaks and select from the larger list. Okay, so we inserted our page break. Now we're going to the beginning of the document. So we need to go back up to our new blank page. <laughs> it's going to let me do that. There we go. Our new blank page. And we're going to put in the word director. And then there's the rest of the content. On page one, we are going to edit our footer. So I'm going to do this by double clicking on the footer. Okay. And then when my header and footer tools open, I'm going to say different first page with the little check mark there. And we're going to close our footer. I'm going to go to the view tab. It says to go to zoom and change the zoom to 125. So if you want to put in a specific number for how much you want to zoom it, you'll just click on zoom and then you can type it in right here. So we're going to say one, two, oops, yeah, one, two, five. Okay. And then I'll say, okay. Then they want to change it back to 100. Okay. Then we want to put our insertion point at the beginning of the document again. We're going to go to the file tab, preview it, which is in the print section. Woo. <laughs> and then we're going to go back and return to print layout view, which I we're already on print layout view. I didn't leave that. So then we're done. So we're going to say, okay, obviously, if you don't finish all in one setting, you can save it and submit it later. Um, but if you just get through all the questions, it's going to be like, you're done. Let's submit. Now that I've submitted it, you can see how long I spent. So 16 minutes, um, how many attempts I've made, when I made my most recent attempt, and whether I passed or not. You pass at 60%, six zero. So here's my score. Now, if I didn't get them all right and I wanted to check, I would just go to view submissions here, click on that button. And this is going to give me just like with checking your results for the graders, a nice breakdown of the instructions and then what I did so that I can check my own work and also so that I can check your work. Um, if you submit something and you're not sure what's going on, we can go through this um, results together and uh, make any changes and fixes. So here we are. You can see how many times you've attempted it. And again, the stats, we're just going to click on it. And while the ones for the graders give you the instructions and then you open them up, see what you did, this one has kind of detailed instructions. So um, question number one, what was it? Here it is. And then it gives you all the methods. So you can see ribbon, keyboard, right clicking, um, and from the kind of most common to the more rare ways um, that you can do it if you want to. Um, and it goes through for all of those questions and it gives you these nice written instructions. If you want to check your own actions, you can click on student actions and see where you clicked and stuff. And you can launch the training for the question. Then, of course, you can just go to the next question and next and next um, and so on.
And that's that. That's what I wanted to show you about the simulations, how to complete them, what they look like, what the different parts are, um, and how to check your work so that you can take them again. I hope that this was helpful. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys soon. Bye.